So I figured since I have this, you know, brand uh, appreciation altar up and running at this time, it is a perfect uh, example to teach those of you who may be considering doing anything similar uh, for your ancestors and your spirit guides. Um, just a couple of like important, not really rules, but um, respect, I suppose, um, guidelines more or less to follow when creating altars like this. Um, the number one thing is it is considered disrespectful to offer uh, stale flowers ever to a divine. Okay, so if you have fresh flowers and they, you know, begin to die, um, you want to change them out. I mean, even if you don't have anything to replace it, you want to, you know, take them out as soon as they, you know, lost their luster. Like, um, like in this case, I have, you know, kind of created a whole new, uh, refreshed vibe for my altar. Like I have added, um, more flowers and I consistently add candles and incense throughout the duration of me having this altar up. But, um, it's just very important for a respect factor that you maintain the freshness factor of the offering. So, like, in these pictures and videos here, you see how I have, you know, food as an offering. Um, if you'll notice, the very first, uh, offering, it has been refreshed because as soon as you see it start to, like, turn mold, like, even in the slightest, it is disrespectful to allow that to sit there so you want to immediately get that out of there and if you have something to replace it with like i have here great if you don't still get it out of there because it is disrespectful and it it will actually start to manifest you know negative energy if you were to just let it continue to mold over and it is also you know your effort will be in vain then because it becomes disrespectful to the divine so the main thing I wanted to um, point out for people when you do dedication altars is that make sure that you are maintaining the freshness of it as in clean up stale flowers, replace, you know, the water or whatever beverage it is like regularly, um, it, you know, exchange the food items, whatever, as soon as they start to, you know, go bad. Um, and another important thing with the, uh, with the, like, stuff that you would be, you know, throwing away, it's kind of, this is just my personal practice, I don't really know what is deemed correct or incorrect, however, I find it to be somewhat, like, disrespectful to just throw stuff like that in the trash, so what I tend to do is, like, just get a designated box or whatever and put all of the stale flowers, uh, old food in that box and then at some point, you know, either toss that, not the whole box, but empty the box outside somewhere, like under a tree, bury it, or you can just throw that whole box away, but just don't take it and take it from the altar and put it right in the trash. You feel me? And, um... I believe that was the only thing I really wanted to point out for people. When it comes to making an altar, like this is honestly something that I have done all my life and I love to create sacred spaces. Like if that were a profession, I would legit make a career out of it because it is my favorite thing to do. Um, I'm actually supposed to be out of my house right now, literally, and here I am creating a grand altar rather than packing my things, but that's because I don't know what to do, so I am in a way giving it to the divine rather than stress on it. I am just showing my gratitude and knowing and trusting that they will see me through it, you know? Um, so it just also proves my dedication, my loyalty, and my faith in my spirit team. 
and do not let ignorant, judgmental, uh, matrix-minded people um, who seem to think that you have, <laughs> it just speaks so highly of prejudice, okay, for someone to assume that you cannot incorporate, like, some Hindu, uh, you know, like, with some Egyptian, with some, you know, like, I personally, I have created my spiritual team in a very organic and uh, natural, authentic way, and I never once even considered that they were all from different, you know, cultures, so for that to be what somebody immediately picks up about my spirituality, and then for me to be called the racist and prejudiced one, I mean, it should speak volumes as to who is the one who is prejudiced and racist here. You feel me? Because that never even fucking crossed my mind. And now that I see it from that point, I find it disgusting. Because Jesus, first of all, isn't Christian, <laughs> okay? And God is not his father. That is such an insult to to misconstrue his message that fucking badly and disrespect his real cause of death was being murdered by the devil, God. So to act as if he chose to be murdered for our sake is is just fucked up, okay? He was murdered for telling the truth and teaching the truth. He was not offered up by his granddaddy for our fucking sins, period, okay? And I'm gonna pop y'all fucking Bible bumpers bubble real quick. Anybody who fucking claims they are so of God and uh, Holy Spirit and, you know, they're always quoting the Bible and shit verbatim, yada yada, but they fucking do tarot and tarot professionally, that person is either a moron or they are a fraud because it states very fucking clearly in the Bible that they are basically to be stoned to death. So unless, of course, you know, they're that one exception, you can fucking bet your ass that they are full of shit, okay? La 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 la